Hey everybody, welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt, and I am super excited about today's video because I got to talk to the VP of Engineering at Kraft to talk about their whirlwind first year on the market, as well as what they have coming up. Basically, we talked about everything they announced in their Craft 2.0 announcement from a few weeks ago, and we went deep on everything. Uh, we talked about extensions and what you can actually do with them and what the company envisions people using them for. We talked about the web app and some of the challenges of bringing a native iOS and Mac app to the web. And then we also talked about Catalyst and how they're able to make an incredibly, just a really good Catalyst app when so many other Catalyst apps on the Mac are a little weird and feel like iOS apps that are kind of ported over to the Mac, whereas Craft for the Mac feels like a native app through and through. So lots of stuff to go over in this video. So we went on a little bit longer than I expected. It's a longer video. So if you want to check out specific topics we discussed, uh, check out the chapter markers below. But other than that, I hope you really enjoy the interview. And again, thanks to Craft for doing this with me. Quick note, that sounds a little bit like they sponsored the video. They did not. Uh, it's not a sponsored video. I could talk about basically whatever I wanted in the interview. Um, and we just kind of talked about the things that I was interested in. So yeah, that's what's going on. Um, hope you enjoyed the interview. Sam, thank you for joining me today. Um, would you be able to uh, kind of share uh, who you are and what you do over at Craft? Uh, sure, yeah. No, first off, thanks for having me on the channel. Um, it's uh, it's really great. So I'm VP Engineering at Craft and here to talk about, uh, you know, the 2.0 release, uh, Craft X. And uh, I know you've been playing around with our, our, our web uh, beta version. So yeah, happy to talk about those things and uh, uh, share what I can. Awesome. Yeah, no, I'm super happy to have you on um, because I think <laughs> my questions are kind of technical. So I'm, I'm super glad to have you on who you can kind of like get into the weeds a little bit with me, but kind of like a little context as to why we're talking today. Craft had an awesome 2021. Um, I think that's probably fair to say. You guys won Mac app of the year from Apple, which must have been huge for you guys, like a whole bunch of websites just in general. Um, have like talked about craft as one of the biggest apps of the year, but everybody seems real excited for you. So congrats on the, uh, the good year. Yeah. Thank you. It's been, uh, it's been, it's been intense. Um, you know, we're, <laughs> we're really super happy about the award and, and, you know, humbled as well. We, we didn't set out to, to go and win a bunch of awards. Uh, we, you know, we built, we built a product that we wanted to use, uh, and, you know, we do use it every day and we use it for, for almost everything internally at Craft. And yeah, as it turns out, uh, you know, lots of other people also like it. So, uh, so that's <laughs> great. Uh, you know, and so, uh, like a couple of weeks ago, you guys announced Craft 2.0, which is super exciting, about almost exactly a year after 1.0 ship. Um, but I think it was not quite the like a traditional 2.0 with like, here's a whole bunch of features and we changed the UI and we did all this stuff. To me, I kind of read your you guys' post like announcing it more as a like, here's what we see Craft doing in the future. Here's the, what we the direction we see it going with things like extensions, um, a web app, and then some just obviously improvements to the core app. Um, is that generally fair, uh, do you think? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, I mean, one of the things we've always done with Craft is we have this amazing community, uh, you know, so we have uh, like something around 10,000 people who talk to us on Slack, on Twitter, and, and they have done since like the, the first beta. And, um, you know, they they help us build craft because they tell us what they love they tell us what they don't love and they tell us what they want next and you know we knew we couldn't do all of that stuff in 2.0 um, but the direction we chose to go with with uh, extensions is is kind of us saying you know we can build a really really great core app uh, and you know we love it we think it's good and you know i i think a few other people like it too but with extensions you can customize it and you can you can build it to fit your workflow because everyone has a different workflow right M most everyone um we have a, a an amazingly diverse user base of craft you know people use it for all sorts of things if we set out to build one solution that suited everyone it would it would probably be a really terrible app um so yeah craft 2.0 with extensions we're kind of setting our our, our direction and we're committing to like keep working with the community to you know build those things that they want. So there's a bunch of things um, that you know we've said we're going to do, we will do. Um, we've not committed to dates because you know people's priorities change and, and our priorities change. Sure. Who knows what Apple's going to do in in WWDC <laughs> this year? Yeah. Um, yep. So you know we 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 like to keep it really flexible. Um, 
but but yeah the message really is you know we stand behind craft we love it we use it um and you know you can expect lots more from us going forward okay cool yeah um so that's that's a good uh, kind of lead into uh talking about the extensions a bit um when you guys announced craft x which is the uh, extension platform um you released like uh, half a dozen or so extensions that you guys made and so these are kind of focused around like getting like things into craft you have like a hacker's news one that like can pull in the top 10 posts like at this moment you've got like publishing ones to ghost and medium um and that seems to be kind of the focus of like getting in things into craft and then exporting your craft documents or blocks from craft is that kind of the core kind of extension you guys are thinking of or is it a bigger thing than that is there more functionality that you think these extensions uh will let people build i there's gonna be more I think is is the simple answer. I mean, we you know we really wanted to release like v zero dot zero one of this. It's developer preview, so we want to release what what we've got now, and we want to work with the community with the developers out there to 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 build it. So what you see now is like the the real core, um, and so you know we're super excited to see what developers are going to do with this. Um, I'll tell you. So as part of the development. Um, of Craftex, we we held like an internal hackathon, and basically all our engineers stopped working on other things and built the extensions they wanted to see in Craft. And for the most part, the ones that you see on our developer site and the GitHub plugins are the ones that they built on that day. So it was really great for me to see. Um, the thing that blew me away was the sheer variety of plugins that we built. You know, we're we're a super small team, and we built all of this stuff in like one two days. Um, so you can, you know, there's power tools with find and replace and custom regex support, to, like you mentioned, integrations with like Rudewise, publish to ghost, etc. Um, and so, you know, we're, this is V, I said before, 0 0.01, uh, you know, um, we released an update, I think today, actually, um, or I don't know when this video will go out, but we, we released an update today, uh, which which gives a whole bunch more functionality in, in the CraftX API. So. Yeah, sorry, long way of answering your question. Um, <laughs> you know, we're, we're really excited. Hopefully you can tell. But but what, what you see now is the start. Uh, and we think we can make it really, really powerful. For sure. Awesome. Yeah. And so you kind of have this like gallery page right now with kind of the like the ones that you built, the 0 0.01 kind of like proof of concepts maybe is uh, kind of a way to put it. Do you plan on that kind of gallery being a thing that... Um, Will kind of exist throughout the like craft extensions, like once it is actually like released and is a stable build and everything. Like, is there going to be like a an app store, if you will, for <laughs> extensions that you guys are going to have? Like, these are the ones that we think are good, um, or are they going to be just things you download from GitHub or other websites, or is this kind of up in the air? You guys are figuring it out, or don't want to talk about it either way. <laughs> it's something we're figuring out. Uh, I mean, we're we're committed to keep building. Uh, extensions ourselves and the ones that we build will keep open sourcing so people can see how we do things and and you know they can copy them or change them or tweak them so we'll do that in terms of you know how you easily install an extension as an end user that's something we haven't solved yet um, because it's developer preview you know we're, we're, we're just not there yet there could be many different options um, we don't know which one's going to work out the best but you know we'll we'll find it Fair enough. And I, I, I think your track record would indicate you guys are probably going to come up with a solution <laughs> that's pretty decent. So um, that makes that makes total sense. One of the things that we do at Craft is when, you know, we get feedback emails in. Um, I, every every member at Craft is, is in the community. So we see all the posts like we can't respond to all of them, but we see them all. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, the developers of Craft read these things and when you send a feedback email in, it goes to everyone in Craft as well. So, you know, we constantly are, are seeing how people are using this, feeling the pain points, looking at the requests, and it gives us a really natural way of like triaging and deciding what we do next. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think so. I mean, you get app of the year. I mean, it's 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 hard for me to argue with anything. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, just out, out of curiosity, um, this like um, like no taking apps are kind of a really hot thing right now. Like there's a lot of apps um, um, like I think about like Obsidian is getting a lot of buzz in 2021. Like Rome Research has its niche. Like Notion is kind of Notion's kind of a whole separate thing, but it's kind of um, in that conversation, too. And just like 
there's a lot of stuff going on in the space. Extensions really feels to me like the thing that is like, oh, like craft isn't just like a good UI. Like craft is super serious about like, um, I don't know if competing is the right word because you can use all these things kind of together, but like, like craft, is, like I'm, I'm trying to vocalize it. Craft kind of got like extra serious to me <laughs> when I saw the extensions, just because like one of the things that's great about um, Obsidian is that you can like you see people like Federico Vatici who have just gone crazy with like developing their own plugins and everything and they're doing it but they're doing it in kind of this like Electron app that not everybody loves um, I generally think is fine in most cases but not everybody loves like people are very turned off by that um, and being able to bring like that sort of customizability into kind of a native app experience um, I think is I don't know. I think it's different because a lot of these um, note-taking things are web-based and um, there's a little bit of jank there sometimes. And I think uh, Craft is kind of the opposite of that. So it's, it's kind of cool to see like a really refined app bring in this kind of power user feature of extensions. Yeah, sure. No, look, it's it's great to hear you say that. I mean, we, and you know, we didn't, I said it before, we build the app that we want to use and, uh, you know, we, we always wanted user experience to be at the core of what we do, right? So, you know, we started with iOS and then Mac OS because that's where we felt we could build the best experience. Uh, like it's kind of the go-to platform for people who care about this sort of thing, right? Yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean that we can't do these these other things like extensions and add functionality in. Um, you know, you mentioned Mac stories. Um, yeah, we're, we're super happy. We just got an award from those guys as well, um, which was like voted for by their readers. So that's, you know, even better yeah. for us in, in that way. And yeah, you know, the, the market for like productivity extensions, I think existed before because you have great apps like drafts and things like that. Um, yeah. And obviously Apple's shortcuts kind of brought it to the mainstream a bit with the uh, you know extensibility yeah, a, and a shockingly nerdy app for apple to make <laughs> yeah, yeah sure um but but you know it's great and we had support from that for for shortcuts from like the really early days and so craft extension is not so much an, uh, you know evolution of that but it was always a natural place for us to go you know we we don't want to clutter up the main app with all of the the, the the super useful workflow stuff that you can do with extensions like we mm -hmm. you know I can't remember if this is when we published, but we built an extension which hooks into GitHub so we can pull all our code commits into Craft and that helps with some of our internal processes. And, um, you know, we would never ship Craft with that enabled because like the other like 80% of our user base who aren't software developers just would, not, <laughs> you know, it, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. useful. But, you know, this is the kind of thing like we really are, are so excited to see what the community does. Yeah, awesome. So. Um, I think that's probably a good time to transition over to the web app, which is new uh, or is coming. I think it's in beta right now. Um, and basically, uh, it's the intention sounds like it's the full craft experience just in your web browser. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, we like I say, we use it internally all the time. And one of the things that our, our, our web developers love is that when we accidentally use the web app and we don't realize we're in it because uh, that's like the standard we want to set so you know we we'll open a link and we open craft and we're just in craft we're using craft mm -hmm. uh, maybe five minutes later we notice oh we're actually in safari or chrome or, or you know whatever um but yeah that's that's really the intention there is one of the loudest messages we had from our community was you know, data portability, accessibility. I want to use craft wherever I am, you know. Mm -hmm. um, often people who have an iPhone or an iPad or a Mac also have a corporate Windows machine that's like locked down and they can't install software on it. And, you know, those people, they were like, we use craft for all of this great stuff here. It would be so cool if I could use it for work as well. It's so cool mm -hmm. for this. And so, the you know, the web just makes... A really natural next step for us. Um, okay, yeah, that that makes total sense. I um one of my pet peeves with apps are when they do like their syncing and sign in exclusively through like the Apple ID of the device you're in, um, because like I have my personal devices and I have my work computer, which is is a Mac, but like I there's some apps that I just can't use because I can't sync the same things over between the devices. Um, 
but yeah, uh, the web app totally makes sense. Like the vast majority, like I forget what the number is, but like 70, 80% of iPhone users have a Windows PC, right? Like the average iPhone user is a Windows user, um, which is a weird thing when you are all in the Apple ecosystem, but it's just the way it is just with the number of people out there. I did want to ask um, kind of what that process was and why you guys, it, you kind of explained it a little bit, the data portability and just people needing to use it on different devices. Um, but one of the things that I think people really love about Craft, and I kind of mentioned it before, was they love that it's a native app, utilizes all these native um, features. You guys do split screen really nicely. You support shortcuts, like all the like iOS and macOS features you could support. Like you guys have it because you're a native app and some of it you get for free and you build it in and you care about that stuff and that's awesome. How much work was it for you guys to um, bring Craft over to the web? And was it like starting from scratch or like was there stuff you were able to pull over? I'm kind of curious just kind of how you guys did that. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question, actually. So one of the great advantages with Craft is that we built it, a, you know, native app first. Um, we built it to be offline first. So you don't need an internet connection to use Craft, right? Sure, you need it to sync, but it'll work perfectly offline. You can edit your notes, you can you know, do whatever you want, and it just magically works. Um, that's not typically the way that new products like this are built, right? No, normally they go web first and then it's online, and then there's a real big challenge going the other way. So we had some challenges, but they're sort of you know inverse of, of what might be typical. Um, but, you know, one of the, I'll give you an example then, one of the early kind of principles for us is that all content on a document is of, of equal importance, right? So we put loads of effort into making sure that like URLs look amazing and lists and images and, you know, the, the, they all look really great. Um, when you add those things in the app, yeah, we have, we have a lot of like freedom to fetch them and, and parse them and do a load of processing on device. And, you know, we can make them look really beautiful on the web we're operating inside more of a kind of sandbox. So you can't make those requests to assets hosted elsewhere um, as easily. So, you know, we have to do that kind of thing in a different way. Um, but really, you know, we care about quality and about user experience. And so we will, we will use whatever tools we can in the platforms that we decide to go after to build the best thing. Um, so, you know, I don't really want to get into debating back and forth on Electron or whatever, because that's probably like a whole different video. It's, um, it's a religious debate, really. At this point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, people have feelings and that's that's fine. Sure. Um, but, you know, we you know, we have native iOS app, Mac OS app. And, you know, we're going after the web. Maybe after that, we go after Android. Who knows? On a similar note, but kind of the opposite direction. Um, I think if I'm not mistaken, the Mac app is a Catalyst app. It's using Catalyst to kind of um, adapt the iPad app effectively over yeah. to the Mac. Um, okay, so one, one of the things that impresses me is um, most Catalyst apps are not that great. Um, like Apple's Music app, I think is a Catalyst app still, and it is maybe the worst app on the Mac. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like Craft is really good. I was wondering if... Um, I know it's not just like a checkbox you check in like Xcode and boom, it's a, it's a Mac app. Although maybe maybe I wish. it is. <laughs> um, I, I wonder if there was anything you could share with kind of uh, what you guys do to make sure that the Mac experience is great and feels like it's not just an iPad app blown up. Is, if it's just, that's... we care a lot, a lot and like we put in the time <laughs> to like add on the stuff that, that is, that totally makes sense. It kind of, it kind of is that. Yeah. There's like, there's no one answer. To just hey do this and then you can make great catalyst apps too. Yeah, um, we had to learn a lot as we were doing it. Uh, you know, which we always do. But when we were building this catalyst, was quite a new thing, and you know, we 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 had to learn a lot. There was a lot that wasn't finished, and so we do a lot of custom stuff. Actually, things that look native, we've actually gone a layer down and rewritten them so the experience is is good enough for what we want on the Mac and and on iOS now. You know, that stuff is catching up, so it's getting easier and easier to do that natively. Um, you know, if someone's setting out to do this, we actually we, we actually wrote a really kind of comprehensive guide, the unofficial guide to, to Mac Catalyst apps, Ooh, okay. um, which I'll, I'll share a link with you. It's it's on our site, but uh, you can you can link it down below, maybe. Um, but yeah, we you know, we went into a lot of detail there about what we did to, to make the Catalyst app so good. It's a great point, actually. Maybe the answer I should have given you is 
we tend not to think about it per se as iOS versus macOS, rather like the form factor that you're using. Because an iPad now, like mm. you can have touch, you can have keyboard input, you can have a mouse and a cursor now. And, you know, all of a sudden that looks very similar then to a Mac. And so there are certain interactions that we design specifically for touch on, on iPads, but also we have a, a an interaction for keyboard and mouse. And so we, we tend to think when we're building feature by feature, how might the users interact with this rather than, oh, this is the Mac app, so we do it like this. Um, and that, you know, maybe that's a secret weapon. I don't, I don't know. I mean, you've got, you've got the web experience, which I think is going to be awesome. Um, you've got the extensions, which are, I mean, that's just infinite possibilities with what could come from that. And you guys don't even know what's going to come from that. Um, and, and it's just where you're giving us, you're giving developers tools and we'll see what pops up, <laughs> but um, definitely plenty to be excited about. Um, yeah. I don't think I have any other questions for you today. Um, this may just have to be edited together <laughs> in post. Um, anyway, I was just um, telling them if they wanted to check out Craft, it's at craft.do and on the Mac App Store, uh, the iOS App Store, um, it's a free download, so you can just try it out today.